Welcome. In part two, we will be looking at queries using the possibility of the semantic web. The following query possibilities through an API or a Sparkle endpoint are part of the semantic web in the way that the institutions have organized their data following certain standards and vocabularies. They follow the standard of known data. If you do not know about the general purpose of controlled vocabularies and ontologies, make yourself familiar with the basic concept and how they add to the concept of linked open data. The kind of query we are looking at in this tutorial only allows for research results through these established lists of keywords. The institutions offering an API query have organized their data following these specific schemata, for example, regarding the different resources you may access with your query or the vocabularies and ontologies you may use. Controlled vocabularies contain data, for example, about artists, places, concepts, materials, and much more. You need to know about these vocabularies and which ones are accessible for your specific institutional data set that you would like to query. Some institutions may, for example, use their own controlled vocabularies together with data coming from Wikidata. The Virtual International Authority file and the ULAN database provided by the Getty Institute. Here you see some information to start with. Often cultural heritage data are not available for download as a package that can be queried directly from the institutional database. Often this is done with an API, an application programming interface. This is a function which allows applications to access data and interact with external databases. The API delivers question and the database sent a response back. The results are often in the JSON format. For using the institutional API, you do not need to know a programming language, but it is recommendable to study the explanations of the API provided by the institutions as their use may vary. There are different versions of APIs. A REST API, which is a web API that returns JSON objects and harvesting formats like the Open Archive Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. Make yourself familiar with these possibilities. In this tutorial, we will be using the REST API with JSON results. There are many cultural heritage institutions which offer an API service for researchers, of which some are given here. Be aware that many API services ask for an API key, which is a password you have to request before starting your query. You can request this key through the website of the institution you would like to explore. The API key will be part of your query stream, to which we will come in a moment. Before we start building the query stream, let us look quickly at the query result. The result you will get from an API request is a JSON file. In order to make this file readable and better understandable, you need a tool that transforms the data in a table. We can use once again the tool OpenRefine. In OpenRefine, you have different options of inserting your data. It also picks data from a web address, including APIs, which means you don't need to download your JSON data and upload it again, but you can simply place your API query string in the web address box and OpenRefine will address this query for you. After transforming your data into a table, you can easily read the categories and work with the data. In this case, we are using exhibition data from the Harvard Art Museums for the timeline of exhibitions placed in the classic box on the top left. Let us have a closer look at the API service of the Harvard Art Museums. This API has several benefits, which include a thorough documentation of how you can make use of this API. These three website addresses will give you further explanations. The service requires an API key and delivers JSON results. Let us now build a query. The query consists of a string that starts with an HTTP, followed by several parameters. The whole miracle of querying data is contained in this one string, and its various components define the query. And it is this string that you copy and paste in the browser. Here we are looking at an example from the Harvard Art Museum's guide. 
The query starts with an URL of the institution you would like to query, followed by the resource you would like to query, in this case objects, followed by your API key. You can also add filters to your query if you are looking for something specific. In this example, we are looking at exhibitions happening at the museum in the 18th century using the parameters after and before. For time filters, you could use a century or an exact date. If you were looking for specific persons, you can also rely on typical ontologies and databases like you learned from the Getty, the Virtual International Authority file, or Wikipedia. In that case, you would use the ID numbers of the relevant dataset. In these examples, we are slightly refining the public query string. Note that the resource is followed by a question mark whereas the filters are followed by an ampersand, both here highlighted in red. The time frame here in green is given once in the after and before mode, the other time for the century ID. By default, results are over limited. If you want to get bigger results, you need to increase the size, as it is shown here in blue. We have increased the results by adding a bigger size and more pages. We can now take this query string and drop it into any browser and hit enter. Any browser, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, or whatever you are using will get you the same results. Look at these queries regarding a list of any medium used in the time of the Renaissance, or on the medium of bronze in the city of Florence. Note how the single components of these queries are built. Medium and cities belong to a list of controlled vocabularies to which have been assigned IDs. Note also the place of special characters in this query. In the picture, you see a typical JSON result list, and this is the same result list is visualized with OpenRefine. Let me show you what I've done. Here we are looking at an API query result. I copy and paste one of our query strings into a web browser which gives me the response back in a JSON format. Reading this format with the eye would be difficult. This becomes much easier when I place the same query string into OpenRefine and load the query string from there. Let us go to OpenRefine. Here we have the possibility to upload a file from our computer, which is in our case not the right choice. We want to have web address upload possibilities. You place your API query string here and make sure that you use your own API key here at the very end and then you click on next and load the preview of the project. This will take a moment. Here we are looking at the JSON format of the file. We want a tabular format which is better to visualize, and therefore we click on parse cells into text number and dates. And this will give us a preview where OpenRefine automatically recognizes the column headers and the tabular entry below. After the visualization, which takes a moment, you click on Create Project and upload this project. Here we are looking at the project and its uploaded format. You see that we have the column headers. Below we have the entries under the respective column headers, and we can start from there. After loading the project, I can have a look at our query of any medium used in the 15th century. The categories and headers become visible, and I am looking at data in a more convenient tabular format. I would not need to look through my data sheet in order to know which medium was used, is I can simply apply a text facet to the medium category, and this bundles all the medium types and gives me the count of each. Let us do this. This column is the column with the medium type. I click on the little arrow on facet, and I choose the text facet that I would like to visualize. OpenRefine is now working on the whole data set, not only on the few entries that I'm visualizing here, and will give me the results of the entire data set in a box here on the left. The data is loading. 
and I see that in the entire data set is the same. I have two entries on shark, I have three entries on elk, ink, ten entries on metal, and so on. There are many more possibilities in terms of cleaning data and visualizing and analyzing data that you can do with OpenDefine. Please watch my other video on OpenDefine. In case I wanted to visualize my data with Palladio as a next step, I would go to the top right corner, export the data set as a CSV by comma separated value, and then I can go and upload it into Palladio. The Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam offers two different API services, a JSON API and an Open Archive Initiative Harvesting API. While well, the first can be used to retrieve a maximum of 10,000 objects, the second allows for the harvesting of all metadata. We are using the first JSON API. Make yourself familiar with the list of controlled vocabularies the Rijksmuseum is using. Here you see an easy query on the principal maker. Now that you have some familiarity with API queries, go and try on your own how this API query works.